So a lot of artists are scared of doing this and this thing is called a break because a lot of artists think that if they take a break then everyone that has ever followed them is just gonna forget about them and it's gonna be this whole journey they'll have to go through all over again so they might as well just keep going and burn themselves out and start making lower quality work. I don't really know how this makes sense but it's just the pressures of society and social media and just how the world is currently that makes us think that we need to keep up with these things when we really don't don't have to. And that is why I want to emphasize that all artists need a consumption day. It is a day where all you spend doing is just consuming things, whether if that's reading, watching, listening, or even eating if that's what you need to do, or smelling things if that's what you need to do. The problem is, is that in this day and age, productivity is so glorified, which is great. I do love a good productive day, but at the same time, it feels like if you're not doing something productive, like executing on something, you feel like you're not doing anything when really it can be productive for you to take a break, not be executing things, and just taking things in instead of always putting things out. So first and foremost, I kind of had to take a break the past few weeks, actually not because of any burnout really, if I were to be honest, but of a family emergency. And that did force me to just kind of put myself into reality and remember like why am I hustling so hard when really there are more important things in life going on. And in the past few weeks when I took a break, I really realized the power of just not doing anything, but just intaking things. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be shocked by what I learned about what happened while I took a break. So just to be clear, by taking a break, it didn't mean I never went on social media or I never posted a thing. It just meant like pretty much almost every day of that week, I barely worked at my normal schedule. So I would still spend time creating things that I enjoyed whenever I wanted to, when it felt right. And sure, I will post it online, but it wasn't something that I felt like, oh, I need to do this because if I don't, the algorithm will hate me. So ideally, if you could have a whole day of doing this, that would be great. But honestly, I think a better option is if you could have at least one to two weeks. And if you manage to even get a month, that would be fantastic. But I also understand in this era of life, it's pretty hard to get away with one month of an entire break. But for me personally, I just spent around two weeks doing this because life kind of forced it upon me, so it had to happen to me. And while this was happening, I then realized why having a consumption day or two consumption weeks is pretty important. So here are three things I've been actively trying to consume these past two weeks. The first book is Atlas of the Heart. The second book is The Artist's Way. And the third book is Draw Stronger. These are three books that I have felt have helped nourish me as a person, as an artist, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And I've been going out more on one-on-one -on -one dates with myself, which yes, if you have read The Artist's Way, that is one of the tasks in the book is to go on these artist dates with yourself for at least two hours once a week. So from just consuming these three things, I wasn't really actively thinking about, oh, what could I do to like put this back into my art like tomorrow? It's like, no, I'll kind of like bookmark it and be like, okay, I'm gonna bookmark this and let this inspiration come to me whenever it makes sense to. So with Atlas of the Heart, I kind of let this book be a place where I want to make comics out of, you know, emotions I've experienced in life. A lot of the comics I make are based off of of my personal life experiences. And a lot of that usually comes with an emotion that I'm kind of discussing in each comic. So what better way to do that than to have a book that basically goes through how to talk about emotions and the language we use to describe them. And then the second book, The Artist's Way, I use to pretty much help nurture my artistic spirit despite the noise of numbers, statistics, posting things at a certain time, whatever. I felt like I honestly kind of forgot what it was like to even be an artist that enjoyed the art of creating things for myself, writing things for myself and not for anyone else to see, which is where I found the morning pages to be very helpful. And if you don't know what the morning pages are, it's pretty much writing like three pages every morning morning, the moment you wake up, I'll be real, I did not do them the moment I wake up, but I still at least did it every day, was to just write three pages of whatever brain dump comes to your mind so that you release whatever is holding you back and you just put it out there and you can move on. And then the third book, of course, Draw Stronger, is learning how to protect yourself from physical injury when you're drawing all the time or even
even if you're not drawing, you're probably just like building things or doing something with your hands as an artist. And it's really important to remember how to take care of yourself. And of course, do your workouts, do your stretches. As you get older, as I've learned, I'm like 28 now. I know that's not that old to some people, but I have noticed that my hands aren't going to be as resilient as they once were. I, a lot of it actually isn't from drawing, it's from holding my phone. Taking one to two weeks off and just really spending that time consuming and thinking about things can make you probably have some less up thoughts in your head. So from doing these things the past two weeks or so, here are the things I noticed. And the last one is gonna be the least expected one. But I will say the first one was, of course, I posted less throughout the week. Isn't that obvious? Like the only things I think I posted was just like an anniversary post for my boyfriend. I just posted like an introduction Instagram reel of myself because that was so easy to do. The second thing I noticed was that a lot of the times I was posting things that I felt like would do well because other people People made it did well I can make it and hopefully it will do well but that's usually not the case you have to remember that people followed you because there was something about what you created that aligned with them and you have to hold on to that and be careful to not always be following trends just because they're trends like I would say the furthest you should go with trends is if there's a trend you actually genuinely find entertaining and you would like to do your own version of it cool, then do it. But if you're kind of forcibly doing it, most people will kind of catch you on that. And I think like really, if you just find like trending audio and just slap it on the background and just like lower the volume, you can still get away with doing your own thing and not feeling like you're following a trend. The third thing I notice is that you don't always have to feel pressure to just make something completely original and just post it online and be like, this thing is totally uninspired by anything. Sometimes you can just talk about other things that you've been consuming. Talk about the different books you read, talk about the movies you watched, how it influenced you, and not always feel like the only things you need to post is your original work and art. A lot of people think that that's what they need to do, but sometimes as an artist, people are curious about what it is that you are intaking. What are you consuming that makes you produce these wonderful things? And in a way, it kind of is less work on you when you can talk about something that is made from someone else, but you can regurgitate it in your own way and talk about how it inspired you or helped you. Just like what I'm doing with this video is I'm talking about these different books I read. I could be like doing a whole speed paint of my art and talking about something else right now. But instead, I wanna talk about these other works from other people. And in a way, it's like less work on me because I did not write these books, but I can still at least talk about how it helped me. And if you are someone that can relate to me, then maybe it can help you too. And then the last point. You're probably gonna find this one the most shocking, but I actually grew followers throughout this whole time period. So I know a lot of people think that if I take a break online, I'm just gonna have to like fight the algorithm again. I'm gonna get pushed down, shadow banned, and all of this. Like a lot of comic artists I know kind of fear taking a break from posting weekly. And then, you know, if they don't post, they're gonna think that it'll be a struggle for them to make a comeback. But the truth is, is that sometimes not posting can be beneficial for you. I think some people still think you gotta post five times a week in order for you to grow followers, which sometimes it can be true. And some Sometimes if you don't post, yeah, maybe you might lose followers. The TLDR is that it's not that deep if you take a break. You can take a break and if you lose followers, it because you're here to nurture yourself, who you are as an artist, as a human. And then once that part of you is rebuilt foundationally, you can then put yourself back out there. Don't be afraid to take a break because that is the one thing you might need to really feel better about continuing with your work as an artist versus going on this continuous road of burnout. And every day you make that art, you kind of are struggling or groveling at your feet to do it. Like those two weeks could probably save you that that rest of the year struggle. So maybe try it out and take a consumption day to take a break, rediscover yourself, allow yourself to lose followers if need be. But if you gain followers, hey, that's a pleasant surprise. And maybe you can learn some things from the things that you read that you can now share back to your viewers because let's be real, we can't always be creating original things all the time and expect that to be the only thing that we share. Maybe talk about the things that helped you as an artist that was made by other artists. Even if if art is your passion, there is still a road to burnout if you're not careful. And that's why it's also important to think about what type of art career is really the right one for you. So if you want to learn about what art career is right for you, check out this video where we kind of break it down in an ikigai diagram. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. So thank you for watching and peace out.